What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Gary. Honda is popular for their front wheel drive performance cars, but traction eventually becomes a problem when you're trying to make more power. Well, one big trend is reviving the Honda scene, and that is an all wheel drive conversion. We've seen how advantageous it can be on cars like the STI, Evolution, and GTR, so why not join the club? There are tons of information out there which can get confusing because it's all dependent on the parts and chassis being used. So adding to that, I'll be focusing only on the ever so popular B and K series four cylinder engines. Before I start though, destroy that like button to help me out with the YouTube algorithm and to support my channel because these videos take a lot of time to research, filter information, record, edit, and upload. This is a long video and it took me a long time, so Grab some popcorn, grab some drinks, grab whatever you need, sit back, and if you're really interested in doing an all-wheel drive conversion, trust me, you will learn something because this is everything you need to know on how to convert your Honda to all-wheel drive. Let's get started. Before converting to all-wheel drive, we need to understand how Honda's real-time all-wheel drive system works. The two we're concerned about are from the US Honda Civic Wagon RT four wheel drive and CRV or Element. They both are similar in concept, but not exactly the same. The US fourth generation Honda Civic Wagon RT four wheel drive, also known as the Civic Shuttle in other countries until 1996, uses a system Honda calls real time four wheel drive. There's also a six speed manual transmission, which was rare to see for its time. Of the different types of all wheel drive systems, the one used here is considered full time, since it uses a low gear for slow speed, low traction conditions, or also known as SL for super low. There is a viscous coupling located on the drive shaft, which provides constant power to the rear wheels. The 1997 to 2011 Honda CRV and the 2003 to 2011 Honda Element also uses a real-time all-wheel drive system, but it's not exactly the same as the Civic Wagons. It's more of an assist type system because when traction loss is experienced at the front wheels, it uses an electric motor with hydraulic pump to pressurize the system to engage the clutches, which are now located in the rear differential, causing the rear tires to assist. The 1997 to 2005 Honda CRV or Element differential uses a 2.533 final drive ratio, while the 2006 and later uses a 2.562 final drive ratio. So now that we have an understanding of how these two all-wheel drive systems work, let's get to the parts required to convert our Honda to all-wheel drive, which will also be sourced from these cars. Let's start with one of the key all-wheel drive components, and that is the transmission. It's unique to the Honda all-wheel drive models, so you can't just use the front-wheel drive versions. Most of the B-Series and K-Series information I'm going to provide applies to 90s era Hondas. So if you plan to use any B-Series family of engines, then you'll need to get the five-speed manual all-wheel drive transmission and transfer case from a 1997 to 2001 Honda CRV. The stock transfer case uses a 2.542 drive ratio to transfer power to the rear differential and is estimated to handle up to 600 horsepower. Typically, owners end up purchasing an aftermarket billet unit which is stronger and should be capable of 900 horsepower or more. Transfer case gears are also offered if you're planning to make more power. Here's a warning though, the 1997 to 98 transmissions had a half inch smaller shaft than the 98 and later, so this may be an issue if you're planning to order a billet housing. There are also billet inner transmission cases if you need them, but it doesn't look like it's really an issue at the moment unless maybe you're making a lot of power so you can save some money. The B series all wheel drive transmission is weak in that it'll need bracing welded at the one to two shift fork due to bending that may occur around the 500 horsepower range. There is an aftermarket option that will allow you to swap any B series gears like those from the LS, SI, GSR, or Type R into the all wheel drive transmissions case. As far as the shifter, you'll need to get the CRV shifter and cables. There is also the option of a K to B shifter which doesn't have as much slop as the OEM CRVs. If you're going this direction, you'll need to get a TSX shift box, DNA shift bracket, and a 2006 to 2011 Civic SI cables, 
or you can just buy the K-tuned K to B all-wheel drive kit. The TSX uses a pull-push pattern going into first, then second, like the B-series CRV, so that's why the TSX would work. The RSX uses a push-pull type, which will make everything backwards. Unless you're into shifting backwards, then I'd get the CRV or nicer looking and better shifting TSX option. For the sixth generation Civic, you can use the stock CRV transmission bracket and rear bracket. This driver side bracket will be from any B series for this chassis. For other models like the Integra, fifth generation Civic, Del Sol, and CRX, you'll need to get aftermarket mounts, especially the rear all wheel drive bracket. Make sure to include an all wheel drive half shaft as they are a little longer than the front wheel drive ones. Now for the K series family of engines. So for the K series, you'll be sourcing the five speed manual transmission and transfer case from the 2002 to 2006 Honda CRV or the 2003 to 2011 Honda Element. The K series all wheel drive transmission and transfer case should be good up to 800 horsepower. There are also optional billet transfer cases to handle more power and billet inner transmission cases if you need them. You'll need to get the CRV shift box and cables and the RSX Type S shift box and cables also work. There is a difference between the CRV and element transmission though and that is the speed sensor. The CRV transmission has the speed sensor on the rear like the RSX. The Element has it at the front and will require a special vehicle speed sensor converter, repinning or modification to work with your application. The Element also has a closer ratio gearing than the CRV. The kicker for going K-Series is that the all-wheel drive transmission gears can interchange from other K-Series transmissions without needing aftermarket adapters. Another great part is that it can be converted to a six-speed manual transmission. You can also just adapt the all-wheel drive inner casing gear and transfer case to any other K-Series outer case and gears if you want to go that direction. There's just more transmission options compared to the B-Series, so you can potentially have an all-wheel drive manual transmission with six-speed and either stock or aftermarket gears which are great for performance and MPG on the highway. As for the transmission mount, any K-Series conversion mount will work. It will need a custom rear bracket specifically for the all-wheel drive transmission though, which can be purchased by itself from vendors like Hub City Performance or Hasport. If not, the block will get damaged at this location. Attached to the transmission is the drive shaft. One with the viscous coupling is required like the one from the Civic Wagon because if you don't, there's going to be binding in the system and things are going to break. You won't be able to use any solid drive shaft like the one in the CRV and Element because they require the clutch packs in the rear differential to operate and that system is not really designed for performance because when the fluid heats up or there is more power applied, the rear wheels will no longer operate. I'll get to modifying the CRV and Element units later in this video. The viscous coupling limits and dampens the power going to the rear so it doesn't really experience the same amount of power the front wheels do. There's no concrete data on how much power is distributed from the front to rear using a wagon drive shaft, but it seems like 30% to the rear is a likely number. The Civic wagon drive shaft may not be adequate if you plan to go beyond 400 horsepower, so you may have to upgrade it to the larger 1310 U-joints. The viscous coupling can be serviced by removing the C-clip so you can check for any wear and change out the silicon oil. The Civic Wagon's viscous coupling has been used on 1300 horsepower setups. The next popular alternative viscous coupled drive shaft is from the 1997 to 2006 Land Rover Freelander. It doesn't matter if it's from an automatic or manual because they're both the same. The Freelander drive shaft has larger joints than the Civic Wagon's and should be good up to 800 horsepower in stock form. The viscous coupling is seam welded, so in order to do maintenance on it, you'll have to open the welds up and weld it back when you're done or buy a new or refurbished viscous coupling. There looks to be aftermarket offerings coming out for the viscous coupling, so that may be a better option compared to trying to find one from a wagon or Land Rover, which can be rare, expensive, high mileage, require maintenance, and have a sketchy history. For any drive shaft that you're planning to use, it may need to be shortened and balanced. Not only that, it'll also need custom metal brackets made to secure the drive shaft within the tunnel and special adapters to bolt it to the transfer case and rear diff. Attached to the end of the viscous coupled drive shaft is the rear differential. There are two popular rear diffs used and they are from the Civic Wagon RT four wheel drive and CRV or Element. The CRV and Element is dimensionally longer and uses a clutch pack in the front snout of the housing while the wagons is shorter and has a viscous coupling in the drive shaft. 
nothing internally can be exchanged or shared between the two. There is a slight difference in final drive ratio as mentioned earlier, but it's nothing to worry about. The stock Civic Wagon's rear differential has been used for 1300 horsepower setups, so it's very durable. It's an open differential, but a limited slip differential from a D-Series or other aftermarket offerings can be installed for more traction in the rear. The wagon parts have been discontinued, are rare, in high demand, and expensive. The cheapest route is to source parts from the 1997 to 2011 Honda CRV or 2003 to 2011 Honda Element. You'll need to get the rear differential and axles, which can be found at your local junkyard. So what are the modifications required if you go this direction and want to make more power? Well, first you'll need to pin and weld the clutch packs so they are solidly connected and no longer slip. There are also aftermarket options which require no pinning and welding that are drop in and do the same thing as pinning and welding the clutch packs. The CRV and Element uses an open rear differential, but there are aftermarket limited slip options available. Now that there is a solid connection, you will need a drive shaft with a viscous coupling, like the one from the Civic Wagon or Freelander. If not, there's going to be binding and then things are going to break. All said and done, the modified CRV or Element differential route should be capable of handling up to 800 horsepower or more. The limits are still getting pushed, so this may be the popular route once more testing is completed since it's cheaper and easier to find parts. So the all-wheel drive system we are building will be similar in operation to the Civic Wagon RT four-wheel drives. But I'm not done. There are also other 2.5 final drive options which might be stronger than the Wagon or CRVs, like the 2002 to 2008 Jaguar X-Type. Ford 8.8 or various BMW and probably more if you can get custom final drive ratios manufactured. These units look beefier and are used for larger heavier cars so using them for a lighter car should not be an issue for them. The CRV or Element and Wagon rear differentials are the most popular since their Honda OEM compact have less weight and require minimal spacing and cutting. And let's not forget, these two diffs have been proven up to the 800 and low 1000 horsepower range. But if you really want something beefy and probably more affordable, then go with the other alternatives and not have to worry about breaking a rear differential. Custom axles and hubs may be required, so you'll have to do your research before going on this path. After the rear differential, the next part we move to are the axles. So if you have a Civic Wagon RT four wheel drive rear differential, you'll need to use the wagon axles. And if you have a CRV or Element rear differential, you'll need to use those axles. They do not interchange because the CRV has a 23 spline inner axle compared to the wagon's 25 spline. Typically, if you use a wagon rear differential, you'll need two long axles, which is the driver's side rear axle. For the CRV and Element, you'll need two short axles, which is the passenger side rear axle, in order to center the rear differential. The stock wagon axles are thicker than the CRV and Element axles. They are harder to find also, but there are stronger aftermarket options available for both that should be capable of 500 to 1000 horsepower. Let's just say that the stock wagon differential, drive shaft, and axles have done 1.260 foot and high 7 second quarter mile times, so you may not need to spend more than that if you can find them. Now onto the rear differential mount. Fortunately, even though they are different sizes, the rear mounting point is the same for the wagon, CRV, and element rear diffs. The RSX, EP3, and 7th generation Civic will have similar mounting points compared to the older Integra, Civic, and CRXs. There are already vendors that'll sell you a mount kit for most of these applications. As for the rear trailing arms, you can make your own. The Civic Wagons can be cut and welded to fit the 1990 to 2001 Integra or 1988 to 2000 Civic trailing arms. The other option is to modify your existing rear trailing arms. You'll have to graft them onto whichever trailing arm you plan to use with larger tubing and adapt 1999 to 2006 Honda Insight four lug front hubs, which have 23 splines and also make custom brake mounting brackets. There are several other methods, like if you want five lugs or a better offset for the hubs, so you'll have to explore those options on your own. The easy and expensive route would be to purchase stock ones which have already been modified and are designed with certain features that'll allow larger wheels to fit, better axle clearance, or weigh less. If you are converting a 2002 to 2006 Acura RSX or 2001 to 2005 Honda Civic or 2002 to 2005 Honda Civic EP3, then the all-wheel drive conversion is simpler. There will be some fabrication, 
but you'll be able to bolt on stock parts from the Honda CRV of the same era. You'll need to get the 2002 to 2006 Honda CRV rear trailing arm, lower control arm, spindle, rear rotor, and rear caliper bracket. You'll also need the front subframe, which will help provide clearance for the transfer case or you'll have to modify your RSX EP3 Civic if you're using your existing front subframe. And here's the part that's cringy. You'll have to cut the bottom floor to build a drive shaft tunnel. The locations will vary depending on the model you have. So for example, if you have an RSX, you're gonna be cutting in this area. If you have a Civic, you're gonna be cutting in this area. And if you have an EP3, you're gonna be cutting in this area. There will need to be some modifications if you plan to keep your parking brake after this conversion, since you'll be cutting the area it's located at. Another important piece to making your car all-wheel drive is the fuel tank. The cheap method is to use your stock fuel tank and leave it in the trunk. It works, but there might be concerns with safety, strapping it down, the smell of gas, and having to open the hatch or trunk every time you have to fill up. Of course, this also applies if you're planning to use a fuel cell in the trunk. The best method is to modify the stock fuel tank to clear the rear diff and drive shaft or custom fabricate a tank or two. The last thing to consider is the exhaust routing. It'll have to be rerouted since the drive shaft is now occupying the tunnel location but you can run it along the drive shaft to the rear. You can also do a hood exit and forget about even routing the exhaust. So, you know, if you're building a race car, it's perfect. Just use your creativity. And that should be mostly it for converting your Honda to all wheel drive. But I'm not done yet, guys, because there are still other options. If you're not into fabricating and welding, it's good to know that Honda offered a factory all wheel drive option for certain models. And that applied to the 5th generation Civic and 3rd generation Integra, which were not offered in the US. Just like everything else during the 90s, you'll need to look for a Civic RTSI and RTX and an Integra ZXI, which came stock with a single overhead cam, but you have everything all-wheel drive in the rear from the factory without the hassle of doing a rear all-wheel drive conversion. There is also the 1996 to 2002 Honda Orthia, hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly, which is a 6th generation Civic in wagon form and came with a dual overhead cam B20 engine stock. This car used the dual pump rear differential found in the CRV. Doing a more powerful VTEC engine swap is all these cars need, and maybe even a turbo kit if you want more power. The modifications discussed earlier to beef up the all wheel drive system also apply to these cars. So, if you're looking for these special Honda all wheel drive models, they can be sourced through an importer. Unless you live in those countries already, then lucky you. There are probably other Honda models that were offered with all wheel drive from other countries, but you get the idea. The all-wheel drive conversion costs can be summed up into these scenarios which depend on whether you're using a B or a K series engine and if you're converting with wagon or CRV or element parts. These prices are based off of using as much OEM stock parts as possible that you should get with your major items and is the minimum required to convert your Honda to all-wheel drive. It does not include labor. You can buy more expensive stuff from Hasport, K-Tune or other aftermarket vendors, but that'll just increase the price. So if you go the cheap route, it'll cost you around $4,000 plus. And if you go the expensive route, you're looking at around $7,500 or more. Of course, you can always do it cheaper if you find deals at the right time, have patience or are a good negotiator. These prices are just to give you a very rough estimate. Here are the power ratings these components will handle in stock form. So if you plan to make more power, then add more money to strengthen up the weaker components in the system. It's expensive and it might be better just to spend the money on a turbo kit. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Use the money to convert to all wheel drive or go turbo or buy another car. I hope this video solved most of your Honda all wheel drive conversion questions. Feel free to rewatch it in case you don't understand or miss something because there is a lot of information in this video. Also, leave any questions in the comment section below so we can discuss further. I'm sure there will be other experts chiming in. If you found this video informational, it would be very much appreciated if you hit that like button and share it with your local groups or forums to support my channel to motivate me to get more content like this out for you guys. Because videos like these take a lot of time to research, filter information, record, edit, and upload. Also, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for future content. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one.